Hello everyone, and welcome to another SOLIDWORKS Tech Tip from Hawkridge Systems. This is Jacob Ames, Senior Applications Engineer, and in this video we'll be covering a few of the most important tools for evaluating surface quality for both surface and solid models. Especially for those of you designing consumer products where the feel and aesthetic of your parts are of high priority, surface quality is exceptionally important and can't be ignored. While rather difficult to assess visually, SOLIDWORKS provides several tools for evaluating the quality of surfaces, and all of the tools covered here are applicable to both surface and solid models. Before we begin, however, it's important that you understand the difference between contact, tangency, and curvature continuous conditions, otherwise known as C0, C1, and C2 continuity. If these terms aren't ringing a bell, I highly recommend you take a look at our previous video summarizing these concepts, which we've linked in the description below. With that, let's get started. Here I've created a simple surface model for showing all three contact types at the same time in the form of filled surfaces, which brings us to our first strategy, which is visual inspection of the model. In some cases, especially for C0 or regular contact, turning on real view and applying a shiny appearance, such as the polished aluminum used here, can reveal surface irregularities and inconsistencies by the reflection of the appearance. Here, for example, you can see how the reflection is discontinuous, and the strip of light from the environment doesn't continue across the edge and onto the neighboring faces. This is a good indicator that there's no tangency or curvature continuity between these faces, and this edge would be both seen and felt if we were to manufacture it in its current state. For tangent and curvature continuous faces, these reflections would blend across the neighboring faces continuously. You may also consider temporarily turning off the display of tangent edges in your model to determine whether faces meet the requirements for tangency. From the View drop-down, select Display, then Tangent Edges Removed. If the edges between faces disappear when using this view option, it's relatively safe to assume that they're either tangent or curvature continuous. And as you can see, our surface patch with the contact continuity still retains its visible edges, while the others don't. It should be noted that this technique will not work for surface bodies unless the surfaces are knitted together. While helpful, visual inspection isn't particularly precise. For a more analytic approach, consider some of the tools available in the Evaluate tab. The Deviation Analysis tool evaluates the angle of faces along a common edge, helping us understand the type of continuity between those faces. Simply select an edge or multiple edges, and then click Calculate. The arrows applied to the edges represent the angle between the associated faces according to the color spectrum, where green and blue represent larger and smaller angles respectively by default. As you can see here, our contact patch has a maximum deviation of over 15 degrees, while our curvature continuous patch has a maximum of one hundredth of a degree, which may be attributed to approximations by the tool, so it's safe to assume that that's curvature continuous. Keep in mind that for surface models, the surfaces, again, must be knit together for deviation analysis to work, as open edges aren't allowed. Now, interestingly enough, simply using tangency or curvature continuous options when creating surfaces is not necessarily enough to force the continuity throughout the entire surface. Using deviation analysis on our tangent patch actually shows a max deviation of about three-tenths, which is enough to be potentially concerned with. In essence, you are requesting tangency or curvature continuity when using these options in your features, and as such, it's important to use evaluation tools after creation to confirm the quality of the resulting surface. In this example, it looks like our tangent surface isn't truly tangent all the way around and might require some rework. The next tool worth considering for surface evaluation is surface curvature combs, which can be enabled by accessing the view dropdown, then display, then surface curvature combs. The default mode is persistent, which creates a mesh of curvature combs illustrating the curvature throughout a network of curves. This can be very helpful for single surfaces, but it does get a little messy with multiple faces selected. Consider using the scale and density tools in the property manager to clean things up a bit, and note that unchecking direction 1 or direction 2 will disable curvature combs for specific directions. For the cleanest look, I recommend turning off one of these directions and then setting the mode to dynamic, which allows you to see a single curvature comb at the location of your cursor and then click to place multiple combs as desired. In the case of our contact patch, notice how the combs take off in different directions at the edge location. This is what indicates contact 
as opposed to tangent or curvature continuous. On the tangent patch, you'll find that the combs continue in the same direction at the edge, but there's a sudden change in the magnitude of the comb. And then finally, the curvature continuous patch shows a smooth blend of curvature across the edge without any sudden changes in magnitude or direction. For reference, you'll also see a value for curvature and radius of curvature next to your cursor when in this mode. The curvature command found in the evaluate tab is another tool for service quality assessment and operates by color coding faces according to their curvature values. The data represented is very similar to that of surface curvature combs, but you may find it easier to interpret. For contact surfaces, the colors are certain to be distinct between faces, and even with edge display turned off, the geometry of the face should still be very clear. Tangent faces are often represented similarly, but just because two faces show a sudden change in color does not necessarily mean that they aren't tangent. It simply means that they are not curvature continuous. Curvature continuous surfaces are illustrated with perfectly blending curvature colors as seen here. You won't even be able to tell that it's a separate face without your edges showing. Finally, the zebra stripes command is one of the best ways to determine the continuity type between faces, and it works by simulating strips of light reflecting off of a surface similar to our first technique with a shiny appearance, but much more precise. Once enabled, you'll want to look for irregularities in both the position and the direction of the stripes, especially around edges where faces meet. If there's an obvious misalignment in the stripes between faces, this indicates contact, and usually it should be fairly obvious. For tangent faces, the stripes will match at the boundary, but they'll typically take off in another direction very abruptly, as seen here. Now you may need to rotate and adjust the camera perspective a bit for this behavior to be obvious, so be aware of that. And then finally for curvature continuous faces, the stripes will match at the boundary and, while they may change direction across the bounding edge, they do so very smoothly rather than suddenly, as seen here. And this should remain true regardless of how the model is oriented. While admittedly somewhat more difficult to interpret than our other evaluation tools, with a bit of practice you'll quickly find that zebra stripes is an excellent tool for assessing simple tangency versus true curvature continuity in your more complex designs. With all these service evaluation tools at your disposal, you now have a complete arsenal for understanding the quality of your model faces for both surfaces and solid designs. As a quick summary, I've put together a quick snapshot of each tool, when they should be used, and what you can expect to learn from your model when using them. Starting with visual inspection, you can use a shiny appearance with real view enabled to look at the reflection of your shiny appearances and quickly identify contact conditions as well as any other obviously poor quality surfaces. Deviation analysis allows you to select edges and then determine the angle between faces with color-coded arrows and on-screen callouts. This tool is especially helpful in that it can help you identify areas that are not truly tangent or truly curvature continuous in the areas you expected. Surface curvature combs display graphical curvature indicators on screen within a network of curves along with tooltip indicators on your cursor. This can be extra helpful for investigating continuity in very specific areas. The curvature command is more general in analysis that color codes an entire model according to curvature values and provides tooltip values of curvature and radius of curvature at the cursor location. Curvature results are generally easy to interpret, but they can sometimes make it difficult to distinguish between tangency and true curvature continuity. Finally, zebra stripes are one of the most detailed curvature analysis tools applying simulated strips of light to the model. The reflections can then be used to determine the continuity at any location on the model based on the behavior of the reflections between adjacent faces. While a bit more difficult to interpret, with some practice this tool can be used to distinguish between all forms of continuity. So there you have it. SOLIDWORKS features a wide variety of options for investigating the quality of both solid and surface model faces, and with all these tools at your disposal, you can now get back to designing better than ever. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. We release new SOLIDWORKS videos every week, and we've got hundreds of other videos for you to check out detailing solutions to common SOLIDWORKS questions. If you have any suggestions for working with surfaces, let us know in the comments, and be sure to visit us at hawkridgesys.com for more learning resources and professional SOLIDWORKS training opportunities. 
Thanks for watching and see you next time.